Oh, yes. A very important question. I think teaching itself is about passion. It's not a profession. Profession part of the teaching comes later. But anybody who wants to be a teacher should have the passion to be a teacher. Because the teacher is much more than an instructor or just uh, somebody who provides you with information. He is here or she is here to transform the child into a better human being, apart from being a very good citizen and a professional. So I think teaching itself is is a field that demands that kind of passion from the people who want to engage in it. But as the case may be in many places, teachers are just uh, doing it as a profession. It's a job, a salaried job, and they could have worked anywhere and they also are working in an institution. I think such teachers are very detrimental to the system. And we must look for the right kind of teachers in the first place. In our institutions, because the ideals of the institutions are very clear from the day one, we are here to transform the children into good human beings, apart from providing them with all the academic and the knowledge and uh, skills and talents and whatever is required for them to uh, earn a good living in the society and find a respectable place in the society. That is one part of the job. The other part is to transform them, to mold them, to help them become better human beings, which is to be more compassionate, more kind, more contributing to the welfare of all. And it's not just about their own personal welfare. So this idea has been made very clear and we borrow it from one of the most ancient scriptures of India. They are called the Vedas. Some of you might be familiar with it. And uh, there in the Rig Vedic text, uh, a phrase comes, Atmanomokshatam Jagathitayacha in Sanskrit, which means for one's own emancipation, or redemption and also for the welfare of all. So this is the motto of the institution that we work not just for our own personal welfare, but also for the welfare of all. So these ideas are made clear right from the time a teacher is interviewed for our institutions. And only those whose uh, personal values fit into our sy system or organizational values, we only take them. So we are very, very choosy in terms of taking our teachers. And fortunately, because of our institutions, the kind of institutions we are, many very inspired, very good teachers, they come and join us. And we are also in rural areas. You see, it's not like a state city like Singapore, where most of the schools are, you know, at a stone's throw from each other. But there in India, these schools have been established in very remote rural areas. Sometimes there are no roads to that place. So that itself is a great filter for us. You know, those who are really passionate about teaching the rural children and they don't mind the inconveniences of a rural life, only they come and join us. That is how we have picked our teachers and because they already have that in them, so it's very easy to mold them further. At the same time, as I mentioned, we also train our own students, our own alumni who have graduated from our institutions to become teachers. In fact, we found that in India, and I'm, I'm sure in most of, most of the, the different countries of the world, we have found that in the last two to three decades, teaching as a professional profession has not been given uh, the due respect and um, uh, acknowledgement. Most of the teachers have not been uh, celebrated in our institutions. And while children who graduate and their parents, they, they want them to take up professions which are high paying or more uh, celebrated in the modern times, teaching has not got its due. So we encourage our students to take up teaching as a profession, as their life's goal and to help mold other children. And because many of these children have come from disadvantaged backgrounds, they appreciate the efforts of the institutions and they also want to give back. So they become very inspired by the time they graduate and they feel that now it's their duty to help others also cross this chasm. And that is how we are able to get right kind of teachers. And the same applies to our medical institutions. We are providing medical education for free now. Again, inspiring rural and uh, marginalized children to take up medicine as a profession, also as a passion to serve the society at large. So I think th this is how we are able to inspire more and more people. And more than anything else, I think the leadership has to live this idea day in and day out. It is a top-down approach. It's driven by this leadership team. So if the leaders of the organization are very good at this and they follow the value system without compromising on it, I'm sure that culture spreads right to the bottom of the uh, pyramid or 
to the last person in the institution. And I keep telling everybody the story from NASA that when John F. Kennedy, the president, went to the space station at NASA and he looked at a janitor who was there manning the lift or cleaning somewhere and he asked him, what are you doing here? And the person, the janitor, replied, I am helping America put a man on the moon. That is the kind of passion, that is the kind of culture I tell our people to have from the gatekeeper to the trustees to the leadership team to teach everybody speaks the same language that we are here to help a child transform into a good human being. We are here help, to help a child get a healthcare service or an operation or a surgery. We are saving a child. That is the motto. And that is something that I think every person in our institution completely understands. So that has been the culture and that is helping us to keep everybody inspired. To continue this route of education.